Ahoy! Welcome to another fun-filled episode of Bottom of the Stream. I'm Nick. I'm Adam. And we are on a never-ending quest to find hidden gems at the bottom of the Netflix stream. Yes. It's good to be back on board the boat. That seems to have been a while this time. I know. We recorded early one week and late this week. So. I know. That's because I've managed to... Partly my... Well, it is totally my fault. 100%. Yeah. Because <laughs> I managed to grab a uh, few days away. Yes. How was it? Lovely. Yeah? Yes. Good. Bit of a change of scenery and all that. Good to have you back on board the boat. Thanks for letting me on. No worries. <laughs> you're COVID free, you're allowed on. Exactly. Have you got any news, gossip, things you want to talk about? Are we, we going uh, are we going straight to news? Or are we are we is this the banter bit? This is the banter bit. <laughs> <laughs> Just have some banter. I, I haven't rehearsed any banter. You shouldn't need to rehearse banter. It's not banter. Oh, I, you That'd know be what? shanter. I, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I am... Um, I did go to the supermarket earlier. I'm going way back now, <laughs> like months reference in the past. So if okay. it's your first episode, you'll have no idea about this. Sure, I saw a shopping trolley Yeah. right next to the porch. Yeah. Not in it. What? Who does that? Who does that? It <laughs> angers me so much. It's so easy. So close. So close is, is it, it so far? It's like it was locked out. <laughs> and it could see all its friends just the other side of the perspex. <laughs> all and its friends were like, in. fuck off. Yeah. You're not coming in here. Some covid hands have touched you. Oh, my word. Terrible. Unbelievable behaviour. Put your trolleys back in the trolley porch. <laughs> Hutch. Trolley you're Hutch. a psychopath. Yes. Uh, Netflix news. Shall we do that first? Yes, let's do that. Do it. Have you got any? Yeah, loads. Cool. Are we alternating? I've only got one. Okay, I'll just go do mine. <laughs> do you want to do mine first? Then yeah, you can all right. do all of yours in a row. Yeah. Um, Netflix have announced a Assassin's Creed series. I have seen the teaser. What would you call it? Not a trailer. Teaser image. Trailer. Teaser Im- Yeah, I suppose it's just it's the Assassin's Creed. Cr- <laughs> Assassin's Crow-lo. Creed logo with the Netflix logo in the middle. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, they're both red. True. <laughs> what do you think? What are your thoughts on it? It's got to be better than that shit film with Michael Fassbender in Charlie. You know, I, this is one of the uh, few games I've played. Well, the second one. I played yeah. Assassin's Creed 2. Cool. I liked it. I think that's widely regarded as the best one, isn't it? No idea. No. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're not something... I've played a couple of them, but never like. I've not, never been big into them. I've never watched the movie. It's terrible. I've, it's and so terrible. I, I, everyone tells me it's terrible, it's terrible. And that doesn't put me off on his watch. <laughs> it should. <laughs> but I know, that, I know what you mean by that. I mean, yeah, great. I mean, if if they can get it right, it's got potential to be a big franchise for them, hasn't yeah, it? Definitely. Fastbender had a bad run at that sort of time because he did the snowman that time oh, yeah. as well. And that was terrible as well. Bad times. I, yeah, he, I mean, he's not always, he doesn't always pick the best material. No, he doesn't. He's not the best either. Yeah, I mean, he is a little bit overrated for my money. Agreed. Do you remember when Empire did that two-page spread on him? And the it was over the middle pages. Right. The F was stuck in the margin. So it just said, Michael Aspender. <laughs> that really made me laugh. Well, I, I, I mean... I think I've still could, got a copy of that somewhere. He could. Yeah, probably. You've, you've, you've seen the uh, seen him in some of the movies <laughs> where mini Michael's out. <laughs> Very true. Very true. Yeah, no, they brought a couple of guys from Ubisoft on board as executive directors, yes. uh, producers. So hopefully they know what you're doing. They did all right with The Witcher. Yeah. So hopefully they'll know what they're doing with it. I mean, and presumably they will go with the sort of classic um, Italian. I would imagine so. They've not announced which time period they're going for. No. So it'd be interesting, unless they do it over different time periods, a different season maybe. Who knows? Who knows? So I wouldn't expect it till probably the end of next year, maybe even the year after. I I, I think you're probably looking of... realistically... 2022 yeah yeah i would have thought so it's interesting it's worth checking out we're following yeah definitely right hit cool. me with your new stick um okay first one let's go for uh, george clooney i've got something in my eye oh is it george clooney no oh oh that has gone <laughs> no it's not now it has <laughs> are you sure <laughs> yeah okay um let's go with george clooney cool george clooney what about george i mean clooney? everyone likes him don't they people say i look like him <laughs> why have you gone quiet nick this is a podcast you can't go quiet who says that blind people wow wow <laughs> like, uh, maybe you look a bit like him here <laughs> he's a bit this is in this trailer for his new movie that she's gray beardy and with a great big winter jacket yeah on looking a bit picture. craggy yeah <laughs> thanks mate so <laughs> he has directed and stars in the midnight sky which is released on Netflix on December the 23rd. Oh, cool. So, happy Christmas. <laughs> it is a post-apocalyptic drama, follow it, which follows a lonely scientist. Cool. That's George Clooney. I like post-apocalyptic stuff. He is working in the Arctic, 
and he realizes that a team of astronauts is soon to return home. Oh, right. But there's nothing to return home to, so he is racing to warn them about. <laughs> Don't what, come back with nothing here. Basically, yeah. Stay up there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Surely they would know. Well, you'd have thought so. Who's helping like, them get back? They don't just fly back themselves, do they? But the, tra- the trailer looks pretty cool. So it's um, that just dropped yesterday, I think. So yeah, go and check it out. It's also got Felicity Jones in it. Oh yeah, I like her. Uh, Kyle Chandler. Yep. Um, He's in everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that looks cool. Does look good. What's it called? Uh, Midnight Sky. I'm excited. I'll look at that. Is it a film? Yes. Cool. Movie. Nice. I thought, um, again, that's whether they're going for a bit of an awards grab. Yeah, maybe. Uh, do you, apparently... Clooney described it as a cross between Gravity and The Revenant. <laughs> and then someone pointed out to him, <laughs> is that because you were in Gravity and it's written by the same guy who wrote The Revenant? <laughs> Maybe. That would explain a lot. <laughs> but I'm sure it just slipped into sort of soundbite mode. <laughs> but there you go. Um, yeah, so that's that. Cool. Adam Sandler news. Oh, good. We all love Adam Sandler. Not all of us. Netflix loves Adam Sandler. They do at the minute. We talked about him the other week didn't we with Hubie Halloween yep well he's just signed on to another movie for Netflix okay it's a drama a drama it's about an astronaut <laughs> <laughs> is he on his way back to earth and there's no, nothing there no. imagine that George Clooney opens the thing and Adam Sandler steps what up. being all like rawr, 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 <laughs> water boy voice <laughs> fucking man child um, <laughs> so it very much seems like it's pretty much a a solo thing as well you know so he's, he's on his own oh right yeah um, it's called Spaceman of Bohemia. Okay. And it is going to be directed by Johan Renk, who is an Emmy Award winning director. Ooh. He won uh, an Emmy last year for Chernobyl. Oh, really? That was yeah. great. So the synopsis is, the story follows an astronaut, Adam Sandler, sent to the edge of the galaxy to collect a mysterious ancient dust. 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 Dust, anyone? (laughs) He soon finds his earthly life falling to pieces and he turns to the only voice who can help him to try and put it back together. It just so happens to belong to a creature from the beginning of time (laughs) lurking in the shadows of his ship. What? I mean, it sounds like a bit of a departure. It sounds mental. For Adam Sandler. (laughs) Interesting. Produced by Channing Tatum. Really? Yeah. (laughs) What? What? That's very random. There you go. Cool. What's it called? Spaceman of Bohemia. Do we have a release date? A, well, he's got another movie to polish off for Netflix before that. So, uh, <laughs> um, again, I think you're looking probably at the end of uh, the end of the year, to be yeah. honest. Next year. Yes. Cool. I forgot we're nearly at the end of this year. We are. <laughs> God knows how, but we're nearly there. Time means nothing anymore. It doesn't. So, we even missed Halloween. We forgot to do a Halloween episode this year. Oh, well, that was kind of my fault as well. <laughs> I don't know. I've, I know when Halloween is as well. You can't take all the responsibility for that. Well, we do. We talked about this last year, though. We do horrors all the time. We do, yeah. But last year we did like a special Halloween. Well, an anti, yeah, it was an anti Halloween. Yeah, it was. Well, this year we've just ignored it completely, forgot that it happened. Apologies for that, everybody. Um, we'll make up. We'll Hope make you all up had a good Halloween. On other holidays. Yes, we will. Maybe we'll do like a. St. Patrick's Day episode or something. I don't know. <laughs> well, just to find all the holidays, yeah. the obscure holidays. Yeah. When's Canada Day? Don't know. <laughs> we could do Bon Cop, Bad Cop too. Oh, good. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Where am I? More news. Third news. This isn't official news. Okay. Rumors? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> My, did you ever watch Mindhunter? No. I, uh, no. No. Okay, are you sure? I think I might have watched a couple of episodes of so, it. So that's exactly what I've done. I really enjoyed it. Right. But just never quite went back to it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's David Fincher. Yeah. And he basically um, said in an interview over the last week or so, he was talking about Mank. Yeah. Which is coming to Netflix also next month. Yes. Which he's directing. And he was asked about the future of Mindhunter. And he said, it's going to be very difficult for us to do any more of that. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. So, officially, it is not cancelled by Netflix. But he doesn't want to it do it. It is unlikely that it will return <laughs> Interesting. from the horse's mouth. Unless they give it to somebody else. Oh, that's always a possibility, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. So, yep, yeah, that's that one. Then just a couple more non-Netflix news. Non-Netflix news? The Mandalorian yep. is now back on Disney+. Plus. Oh, is it? Yep. I've well, never... as of the time of release of this cool. episode, it will be. So I never I will... did get to that. I will get to it. I haven't Do... got Disney+, Plus, so... It's difficult to get to, but I will get to it. I know Manor can get you it. Oh, Walt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just we'll just don't freeze him. Yeah, 
<laughs> cool. Uh, it's good. You should check it out. I will do. It, it's the I don't best, know why I haven't. It's the best thing Star Wars have done for many years. <laughs> wow. Big words. Yeah. Well, those recent ones are all just... Yeah, they were a bit trying. Same old, same old. Um, very derivative. Yeah, there you go. good word. Thanks. And then, unbelievably... I couldn't believe it when I saw this. Because that's because it was unbelievable. Yeah, I, I just like, why does the world work like this? I said a few weeks ago, we started watching Dawson's Creek. Yes. On all four. You did. Guess what is coming to Netflix in the UK on the 1st of November? Dawson's Creek? Yeah. Is all it really? Of it. Yep. How weird. Which is brilliant, because I can carry on watching it, I don't have to sit through all the stupid adverts on the Channel 4 streaming service. That's a great point. <laughs> that's good times. Yeah. Excellent. I just thought, wow, oh, weird. That's a weird thing to bring. How strange. <laughs> so there you go. Good. I'm glad. Glad you don't have to sit through adverts anymore. Thanks. It's weird. What you, you need to sit through adverts in this day and age? No. When I went away. When I went away. <laughs> when I went away for a few days. <laughs> went to mow a meadow. Um, it's this, we had these weird things that we watched. <laughs> because, Your children? <laughs> no. <laughs> because obviously the, the the internet strength wasn't great. Yeah. These things were on discs. And you put them in this little machine. What? DVDs. DVDs? <laughs> wow. Really? What DVDs yeah. did you watch? Well, I'll come on to that. Okay, good. In the what have we watched bit. <laughs> okay, cool. Should we do that now? Let's do it. I've got loads. <laughs> I've got literally loads. I've had a very, very much, a very boring week. So I've just okay. literally binged Netflix. I've nearly completed it. <laughs> uh, do you want to go first or shall I? You've I'll done a lot first. of talking. Oh, okay. No, you go first. I don't <laughs> that know. makes me sound really egotistical. <laughs> You've done a lot of talking. I'll go first. <laughs> You go first. I've watched something that you told me to watch. Okay. Vampires vs. the Bronx. Oh, yeah. Did you like it? I enjoyed it. It was very much fun. fun isn't it? Yeah, it is good fun. I enjoyed it. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. Yeah. Good recommendation. Check it out, people. It's quite good fun. I didn't see the twist coming either. No, it's nice. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, I, I it, just it sounds like it should be shit, but it's actually quite good. <laughs> and it's really sweet, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's, it's, the, all the kids are awesome in it. Yeah. Um And yeah, I, just, I really liked it. Yeah, check it out. And Method Man. He's in yeah. it. Brilliant. Randomly. You go. Okay. On my DV- one of my DVDs, yes, I took some DVDs off the shelf at home. Yep, and they were still wrapped. I've had them for years. <laughs> I was like, well, if we're getting away for a few days, might as well uh, finally watch a couple of these. Yeah, one of them was Kill List. Yeah, have you ever, ever heard of it? I think so. So it's about two hitmen. 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 <laughs> John Hitman and Jeff Hitman. Yeah, and they they have a list of people to kill. <laughs> right, hence the name. Yeah. Uh, and then things get really weird. Okay. Like, proper weird. Right. I think you'd like it. Who's in it? Tyres from space. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know his real name. such a random, <laughs> random reference. But yeah, no, exactly. Michael mean. Smiley? Yes. I think is his Something name. Something like that. And some other people like, yeah. that I've sort of vaguely recognised but didn't really know. Yeah. But um, I think you'd like it. Okay. I didn't like the twist. Right. I thought it came across as a bit laughable. Oh, right, okay. But I think you might like it. <laughs> I do enjoy laughable. Laughable twists. Um, but the the point I want to make is it's directed by a, a gentleman called Ben Wheatley. Yep, I know that name. What, do you know why you might know it? No. Because he has just directed Rebecca, which is just released onto Netflix. Oh, yeah, I knew it had Netflix. Recently. He has also just signed up to direct The Meg 2. Oh, really? I yeah. loved The Meg. I thought it was a great film. Meg Harder. <laughs> Meg Harder. I enjoyed that film. Um, I went to the cinema to see that. Back yeah, it's all right. You could go to the cinema. <laughs> yes, that cinema so much. Yeah, it was... Uh... <sighs> it's bad times. Downer, man. Downer. Yeah. Apparently, Ben Wheatley has also made a film whilst in lockdown. Oh, really? <laughs> which he is editing now. Um, it's a horror movie, hmm. which he shot in 15 days. Wow. In a hotel in nice. August. Nice. Um, and he's, he, I basically was reading the interview about Rebecca, and he was trying to shop shop this movie as well. <laughs> so we'll see. He's gonna he's gonna finish editing up and editing it, and then see where it ends up. There's a lot so. of abandoned hotels around the country at the minute, or there was at that sort of time period. So it was probably a good time to film it. Yeah. So he said he said there was him and a, and a very small crew, and they just yeah had the, great... had the whole place to themselves. Fifteen days. He probably didn't even have to hire it. it probably yeah. just would have been by yourself anyway. The hotel would have been up for the money, so yeah. Mm, cool. So keep keep our ears peeled for that. Yeah, definitely. Quite Sounds good. Talking of things filmed during lockdown. Yeah, I watched Staged. Oh, okay, with David Tennant and Michael Sheen. Yeah, it's really good. Is it good? It's well worth checking out. It's a lot of fun. It's basically they filmed it. It's real life, but it's also partly scripted. 
Okay. And it's about that they were just about to start a West End production or rehearsing a West End production when things got sent into lockdown. So the director, who's also in it, got hold of them and said, can we rehearse over Zoom? Okay. And that's what they did. But then they procrastinate for the whole series. They'd never actually rehearse anything <laughs> at all. And it's really, it's so funny because they've got such good chemistry, those two. And David Tennant is brilliant. There's one scene where they're talking, it's like the first day. Yeah. And Michael Sheen's like, oh, I've been out drawing. I've been, I've got some pencils and I've been out sketching because I'm bored. Because he's stuck in Wales, yeah. the deepest, darkest Wales. Tennant's stuck in Scotland somewhere. They're both their wives are in it as well and girl, or girlfriends or whoever. And <laughs> Tennant's like, oh, I've been drawing as well. And he's got, I drew a pineapple yesterday. Yeah. And he just shows up this sketch on an A4 bit of paper of a pineapple. It's a pencil drawing. <laughs> and Michael Sheen shows up this like, framed canvas of a <laughs> city skyline or whatever it was. It was so funny. It sounds a bit... like, well, that's made my pineapple look shit. <laughs> it sounds a bit like the one that Rob Brydon and Steve Coogan it's did. It's very the, similar the to trip. that. Yeah, it's very similar yeah. to that. There's a few guest stars in a few episodes as well. So Samuel L. Jackson's in one. Oh, cool. And Judy Dench is in one. Oh, right, so okay. they're just, she just appears on their Zoom call. And they don't know she's going to be there and they actually <laughs> shit themselves. She's like super respected. But yeah, it's well worth checking out. It's really good fun. There are only 20 odd minute episodes. Cool. And I think there's a second season coming. Okay. I'm sure I've read that somewhere. Where, where did you watch that? Netflix. Oh, it's on Netflix. It is okay. on Netflix. It's a Netflix original. Boom. boom. <laughs> I'll go. Go. On one that's not on my list then, because you've just made me think of something. Okay. Which I've been watching, which is on YouTube, and it is like 20 minutes, 30 minutes long. Okay. And it is called No More Jockeys. <laughs> and it is Alex Horn and Tim Key. Oh, I've heard of who this. Who I really like. Yeah. And Mark Watson. I don't like that much, but he's all right on this. Uh, and they're playing a game. Yeah. And the concept of this game is you have to name a person. And after you've named that famous person, you then give a category which you all the following ones can't be. Okay. So I would say Mike Tyson. Yeah. No more boxers. Right. Okay. And then. So then I have you, to name a famous yeah. person. Oh, and you fair. add a category. But, but you, you still just have to box. remember it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so clever. every category. Narrows people, narrows it That's down a good idea. Through. Maybe we should do a bonus episode where fun. we play that on the Patreon. What? Check it out. I'll check it out. I will do. Yeah. I've been meaning to anyway because I, I love Alex Horn. Have you been watching New Taskmaster? Yes. It's really good. Yeah. I'm really enjoying it. I think Daisy May Cooper might be my spirit animal. Yeah, she's funny. She's so funny. Yeah, that's going off topic slightly. <laughs> but it's really good. If you've not seen Taskmaster, you should be watching it. Whose turn is it? I've lost track. Well, I've gone off piste. So is it still <laughs> mine or are we going back to you? <laughs> Let's go back to me. All right. I've been watching American Barbecue Showdown. I've seen the thumbnail and I've saved it, but I've not watched it. Watch it, it. please it watch good? it. It's oh, so good. Brilliant. It's like the Great British Break Off with massive hunks of meat. Lovely. It's good. And it's actually really nice because they're all like friends. Cool. And they all get really friendly with each other and it's really nice. I've still got two left, I think. I've not so, quite got two. So is it the standard cook this, taste it, Yeah. worst one goes? Basically, yeah. Right, okay. But it's different categories every week. So, so they do have they like, have like pork week? Yeah, rib week. And okay. one week one week was like roadkill week. Oh, lovely. <laughs> it was like they weren't roadkill, but they were the sort of animals that would get killed on the side of the road. Lovely bit of squirrel, Jackie. Squirrel hair, iguana. One of them had, but they're given the meats at random. So, and it's really, it's well worth checking out. It's really good. I, I'm, I'm just watching um, pre-colonial that. week as well. So they had to cook over actual fire. Nice. But so it was, it was good. They can't, they've kind of run out of ideas with like roadkill week and pre-colonial week. <laughs> it's, it's like, I, I, it's they've close. got these massive, like nice thousand dollar smokers and they're not using them they're just using holes in the floor so like rubbing two twigs together to yeah, get his fire started but the two judges are really good on it the one woman she's just she just knows everything about barbecue and you to look at it you wouldn't think she looks like a teacher okay but you didn't to know it she's like they've got six smokers all going at once yeah and she just pointed at one she went that's dirty smoke and you just and they all looked exactly the same Lovely. she knew straight away she's that it like wasn't a right. pit master she is she knew straight away that it wasn't right it was really good check out that american barbecue showdown nice okay i have watched <laughs> the alienist season two. Oh, have you yeah i keep meaning to start it but then other things like american barbecue showdown <laughs> get in my way any good I, it's it's good it's 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 similar to the first one the performance is really good yeah it's 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 a bit of a slow burn yeah but you know if you like the first series you're gonna like the second series cool okay i'll check it out Sounds good. Second series of Unsolved Mysteries turned up. Oh, yeah. Uh, so it's not even the second series. It's the second part of the Volume, first series. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's been good. Uh, there's some quite interesting. One of them, though, is really out of place because it isn't an Unsolved Mystery. Okay. And it's like somebody's gone, oh, I really want to make a documentary about this subject. So I'll just stick it in here. And it's really strange. It's Tsunami Spirits. Right. And it's about all these 
people in Japan after their big tsunami a few years ago kept seeing loads of ghosts. Right. Like these, this one woman was possessed by like a hundred ghosts at the same time. That sounds <laughs> awkward. <laughs> but it's like, it's really out of place with the rest of the series because it isn't an unsolved mystery. It's like a documentary on ghosts of tsunamis. Yeah. I, I don't... It's, it's so out of place <laughs> and it really threw me. I was like, well, I'm enjoying this, but it isn't an unsolved mystery. Even at the end, normally it'll come up and say, normally? <laughs> normally it comes up and says, if you have any information on this case, check out the website. Yeah. But it didn't even do that at the end because it's like there's nothing to tell. Have you watched them all? No, I've got a couple left. Okay. Is, is there any as interesting as the guy the... from the first season who fell through the roof? Almost. There's a lady who gets... She checks into a hotel yeah. in Norway. After three days, people realise that they haven't. nobody in the hotel has seen her. Right. So the security guard knocks on the door. And the minute he knocks on the door, there's a gunshot. And then she get, he goes into the room. He goes, he goes off, gets the key, comes back, goes into the room, and she's shot dead. Okay. But... Oh, I've got the I've got chicken skin. <laughs> oh, goosebumps. But she's lying on the bed with the gun in her hand, but the, she's holding the gun in a really weird way. Okay. So she's got her... She's holding it almost like backwards. So she's got a thumb on the trigger. Right. And the fingers are pointing down. It's really weird. It's, she's not holding it right. And they reckon the type of gun it was, it wouldn't have, it would have backfired okay. a lot worse than it did. And there's no blood on her hands, but there's nobody else in the room. Oh, and it's real, and they don't know who she is. And still to this day, they don't know who she is. She's an unidentified body. Because she checked in under a false name okay. and a false address. They even went to this town and no, none, nobody there had seen her or knew who she was. Oh, that's creepy. It's really interesting. And they reckon she's like some sort of secret service person or something. It's like off the grid. Oh. But yeah, check that one out. It's really interesting. Like it. Cool. Have you got any more or should I just keep going? No, that's that's me done pretty much. I've got two more. I've started watching Upstart Crow. Oh, okay. Have you ever heard of it? Yeah. It's a BBC sitcom about William Shakespeare and his family. Yeah. Starring David Mitchell and Lisa Tarbuck and Mark Heap. Oh, I didn't realise he was in it. It's, It's fun. I've only watched like four episodes so far, but I'm really enjoying it. David Mitchell's so funny. Is it like, like is it stupid? Yeah, or is it's really it stupid. Quite, no, okay. it's proper stupid. <laughs> it's as stupid as you can imagine. Excellent. But yeah, it's it's really good. It's definitely worth checking out. I'm kind of, I'm kind of imagining like a bit more of an adult version of Horrible Histories. Yeah, pretty much exactly what Harry Enfield's in it as well. Oh, he? Okay. he plays David Mitchell's dad. Pretty much exactly what it is. Yeah. Okay. But it's it's all true stories of Shakespeare's life, but told in a very funny sitcomy kind of way. Got ya. It's all star cast. It's very funny. So I'm about. I think there's two seasons and I'm about four episodes into the first one. Cool. One more thing. All right, Columbo. <laughs> I think I've watched my first 10 out of 10 film of the year. Oh. Um, normally, if I go to the cinema, I rate a film. Yes. And I don't get many 10s. There's a, Occasionally, I do. But obviously, I've not been going to the cinema this year. Sure. So, I've been watching more on Netflix. And we talked about this film recently, actually. We watched, There's a film called The Boys in the Band. I, re- I remember it being in the news section. Yes, which weeks. is Jim Parsons and Zachary Quinto. And Matt Bona. And Matt Bona. Bona? Boomer? Boma. Something like that. Who looks a little bit like you. Does he? Yeah, a little bit. I don't... I, if you I, shave the beard. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking I might grow it more. In fact, the whole, the whole cast are homosexuals. Yeah. And it's about a homosexual birthday party in the 70s in New York. Okay. And it's literally just the tales of what goes on at this party. Oh, so it's like all set on the that one it's, night. And... It's, it's based on a theatre show, on, uh, the, on yeah, a yeah, play. Okay. So it's all one, it's all one set. They never leave this like apartment and loft. It's like a loft apartment with a balcony. Yeah. And you can tell it's a theatre show because people leave the scene and then they'll come back like sure. 10 minutes later. But it gives all, everybody in it is brilliant, and it gives all of them a ch- chance to do some proper acting. Is it, is it a drama? It's a drama. Yeah. Okay. It's not even really about anything. It's just a chance for them all to act and all get together. Yeah. And it's really good. It's like, I was, it's on for over two hours. I was really disappointed when it finished. I was like, I could have watched another hour of it. Oh, cool. I really enjoyed it. Definitely check it out. It's a lot of, it's not fun, but it's a, it's a really good film. <laughs> and it's really, it, I feel like in another year and another time, it probably would have got a cinema release. Sure. And it should. I it's, it's feel, feel it's maybe a bit hidden away. Yeah. Hmm. Unfortunately, so and it's it's definitely worth checking out. Okay, I'll have a look it's at that. Really, really good. But yeah, that's it. I'm done. Excellent. We got anything else? We're 25 minutes in, so we should probably start moving on. Yeah, let's let's talk about this movie, shall we? Yes. Hello, I am Christy, and I'm Leighton, and together we are a new podcast on whiskey tasting called Married, Married Mash. Mash, where we discuss life, family. And pretty much anything. Yep. And Layton brings a new whiskey for me to try. Will we clink it? 
or will we sink it? Check us out on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you find your podcasts. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And remember, always drink responsibly. Indeed. Okay, this week we watched a film called Hungerford. Hungerford, I've not got my notes open. I never have. (laughs) Hungerford is from 2014. It is a 15. It runs for only an hour and 19 minutes. Currently rated at 3.8 out of 10 on IMDb. Um, Normally at this point I'd go through the cast and crew. Um, Nobody in this film's ever done anything before this or since this. But I'll give you some names anyway. Sure. So it stars, was written and directed and stars a guy called Drew Casson. Yep. He plays the main character Cohen Roswell, or Rosewell, which is a great name. Um, George Georgie Bradley plays Philippa. Tom Scarlet plays a character called Adam. Sam Carter plays a guy called Kipper. And Kitty Speed, which is also a great name, plays a character called Janine. And that's pretty much all I've got. <laughs> yeah, and, and this, I will say right off the bat, is pretty much the lowest budget thing we've seen. That, I think it's the lowest budget film I've ever seen. It's... It's basically a student film, isn't it? 100%. I think. 100%. Uh, I, I would love to know how it's wound its way onto Netflix. Yeah, me too. But, you know, we're all about spreading our, our net far and wide and deep. It's a lot like, do you remember those two guys that we had on the interview we did with those two guys a yes. while back? The, I'll never forget my high school friends. Yep. It's a lot like that sort of film. Only I mean. with a very different <laughs> story. And nowhere near as much charm. And yeah, yeah. So there's lots. It is a student film. There's no budget. I would imagine it's zero budget. There's no budget. There's nothing's been spent on it, other than buying the camera. It's it's definitely a sort of filmed at weekends kind of. They're all just mates. The flat that it's filmed in is owned by one of the guys in it. Right. Okay. So it's literally (laughs) just filming it. Apparently, it was made. It was written and scripted to be a. (laughs) It was written and scripted to be a YouTube series. Okay. But when they edited it together, they made a film out of it. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it was never it was never meant to be a film. A couple of them are real life cousins. There was never a script. They what they basically did they got together and rehearsed the film. Yeah, improvised the whole thing and wrote the script well, from the improvisations, and then filmed it from there. Oh, okay. So there was never a script written for it, which I found really interesting. They edited they they did everything themselves. This makeup artist is only sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's just it's I can't tell you tell you how much. Of a student film, it it's is. micro, it's micro budget, zero budget. I would say. I don't think there is a budget. So yeah, Hungerford. Yeah. Where do we start? You usually, ask me if I've got one word review. Oh yeah, have you got one word review? Cohen the Barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> you've you've really laxed on your one wordness of the one word reviews just lately. That's fine. I'm gonna have to rein you back <laughs> in. So where does the film start, Nick? With Cohen Rosewell. Yes. As he introduces, almost every time he's <laughs> he comes yeah. into screen, he's like. My name's Cohen Rosewell. <laughs> it's like he's really, he's come up with that name when he's been rehearsing. Yeah. He's like, I love this name. I'm going to say it I think it's James through. Bond. Yeah. yeah. Cohen Rosewell. Name's Rosewell. Cohen yeah. Rosewell. <laughs> and uh, here's our lead character. And yep. he unbelievably, coincidentally and <laughs> conveniently, has just uh, rented this video camera. Yes. From, I presume, I thought at first they were all university students, but I don't think they were. No. I uh, think he, they're supposed to be younger than that. He is studying for his b-tech and he is uh, as part of his project going to document his next seven days yeah a week of his life yeah we should probably say that it's fan footage it's all yes. filmed by the star by the characters and he is hung over as balls yes he's uh, he's been out on a bender the night before yeah uh, he lives on his mate's sister's sofa which he tells us quite early on correct um his mates so his mates adam yes his sister, Adam's sister is Philippa. Yep. And they have another mate called Kipper. Yeah. We, we never find out his real name. No, we don't. <laughs> and they are kind of, they're basically just dust together in this flat, don't they? Correct. He basically gets up straight away. The only person who's in the house with him at the beginning is Philippa, or Phil, as she's known, I guess. Um, and she's kind of pissed off with him. Yeah. Because she thinks that they left her alone last night. They ditched again. her at the party. Apparently they do it quite a lot, and they ditched her. Uh, he denies it, though. He's like, no, I didn't. We all came out, I thought we all came out together. No, and then he says, oh, no, we left you with... Oh, uh, with that guy with, that you that like. That guy that you like. And she's like, Creepy Ben or whatever. Or she, I can't remember what she <laughs> called him, but... <laughs> boring Graham. <laughs> boring Graham, that was Creepy it. Ben. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was something like that. I was close enough. It's like um, the worst breakfast cereal ever. Yeah. Boring Grahams. <laughs> <laughs> They're like Golden Grahams, but not Golden. Yeah. They're just boring. <laughs> um, then we, we meet Adam and Kipper for the first time. 
Like, did they come in or were they... No, they woke up. Uh, Adam walks in. Yeah. I think he's like, done the walk of shame. Yeah. He's got a black eye. Yeah. He looks about 50. He yeah. looks loads older than the rest I of them. I think they're supposed to be like 16, 17. I think this, this... No fucking way. <laughs> Honestly, I think that's what they're working at. I mean, you know, they're not, but I believe that's the, the, the characters in the film are supposed to be that sort of yeah. age. He's got a black eye from... He says he got it from Big Man Dean. Yeah, so, so far. <laughs> our off-camera characters are boring, Graham, and Big Man Dean. Yeah. <laughs> right, um, it's all so far so okay. Yeah. Then there's a big explosion. Yeah, they argue quite a bit, don't yeah. they? And then they get together to... They decide to have a group photo to kind of bring them all back together to make friends. And then while they're doing that, there's this huge explosion outside. Yeah. Um, so they all run outside. It's like end of day stuff. Yeah, the sky's exploded, um, basically. There's sort of... Storm clouds and yeah, but lightning. The, the, and... There's lightning and there's like glowing redness in yeah. the storm, in the clouds. And... It's like literally like the sky's exploded. Yeah. It's just gone... It's all gone a bit crazy. I um, mean, and it's not... I wouldn't say it's bad special effects because it's on the level of the rest of the movie. Yeah. But... Compared to it, any other movie ever, it's, it's bad special bad effects. Special effects. <laughs> you, you used to be able to get an app on your phone where you could take a video and then put a special effect over yeah. the top of it. That's basically what they've done. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, that's basically what they've done. They kind of ignore it. They're like, oh, that's happened. And then they just go back in and start getting drunk again. Yeah, no one's that bothered. No. <laughs> I mean, like a policeman just turns up and goes, oh, yeah, all the radios and phones are out. Yeah. And they're just, so the, these students are just like, well, was, we'll just go back just inside. Go, just go back inside and get drunk then. That night they're watching out of the window, kind of looking to see what's going on. And they see a man walking over the like zebra crossing outside their house. Yeah. And then he passes out halfway across. He does. And Adam's like, Adam says to Cohen, isn't that your ex-girlfriend's dad? Yeah. And he's like, oh, yeah, it is. We better go down and, we better go down and see if he's all right. And when they get down there, there's nobody there. He's gone. No, there's just a pile of blood yeah. on the uh, road crossing. And his mobile phone? Yes. I think the mobile phone was there. Then we cut to the next morning. Again, we just we, this film, film flies through the first few days. <laughs> it, it lasts for about a month. <laughs> but yes, it's, it's like, oh, it's another day. Oh, it's another day. They wake up. They're all drunk and hungover again. Um, Adam writes cocksucker on Cohen's head. Yep, he can't spell. Pen. No, he spells it wrong. And while he's doing that, Adam's uh, Cohen's ex-girlfriend knocks on the door. Yeah. This, this is Janine. Janine. <laughs> it seems like, I don't know, if she, is she his ex? I think they'd they had, have a strange... they'd had a thing. Yeah. I wouldn't say I, I the impression I got is they didn't ever have a proper relationship. Yeah, he's kind of obsessed with her a little bit, isn't he? So yes. he thinks he's in love with her. She's not so convinced. She does like him. She likes him but thinks he's a drop out. Yeah, because he is. Yeah. So he answers the door and he goes and talks to her for a little bit, not knowing that he's got this uh, expletive written on his forehead. And she invites him to a party. Yeah. She's having a birthday party that night. And then she points out that he's got this Cocksucker, <laughs> written on his head. <laughs> well, you and the Exorcist. That. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which is the to the great amusement of everybody else in the flat. Oh, this bit's really bad. I mean, like, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I almost don't want to be too harsh on it. Yeah. Knowing that it is a, an absolute micro budget. Yeah. It's done in their spare time. These guys. Yeah. Were clearly, you know, this is the they're first thing they're doing. Aspiring filmmakers, aren't they? Yeah. But it's really badly acted at this point. <laughs> That and any time there needs to be some emotion, is particularly yeah bad. <laughs> There's only one good actor in it. Oh, I'm interested to hear who you <laughs> think that is. <laughs> we'll come to that. Um, the the especially the smaller parts are terrible. You can tell they're just people who've been grabbed off. The oh, of course, yeah. It's like somebody grabbing me and you to be in a cartoon. Yeah. And it just sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> I've written here. Adam may or may not have crabs. Um, I think they have a bit of an argument about whether he's got crabs or not. Oh, I, I thought you were doing some like self. <laughs> <laughs> um, sort of. Oh, that's a sound bite. Somebody's going to clip, isn't it? <laughs> Introspective. <laughs> I hate this. I think it might be the first time I've had a character that's got my name in any of the films. Yeah, possibly. And they're getting ready to go out again. They're getting ready to go to Janine's party. Yeah. So we're on a third night in a row. Yeah. Getting uh, getting hammered. Getting hammered as students do, I guess. I wouldn't know. I never was one. I'm not warming to these characters early doors. Oh, not at all. They're they're not likable people. No. None of them. No, no, no. So, uh, but we'll see. We'll see how we, we, that might change as we go along. Who knows? So they head to Janine's birthday party. Um, <laughs> I've written, it looks more like a work conference because yeah. <laughs> these people are all dressed up like, in like their posh clothes. There's jazz music playing. Yes. Because they obviously hadn't got a budget to get any real music. So there's like jazz music playing in the background and they're all just standing around with a glass and it looks like, you know when a work conference breaks up? Yeah. It looked just like that. Like pre-dinner drinks. Yeah. It, it was not like a student party at all. 
And, and it's at a big house, isn't it? And there's a yeah. happy birthday banner, and they're all like, oh, shit. shit. Kermit's like, oh, fuck, I forgot it was her birthday. No one said it was her birthday. <laughs> well, yeah. she, but she didn't say no, she when didn't. she came around. She just said it was a party. He's obsessed with it, you should know. Well, maybe. Well, it depends. <laughs> I don't, well, yeah, maybe. You're probably right. <laughs> um, so, Karen goes to talk to Janine well, as yeah. soon as they get there. He, he Again, pulls her aside. This, this is terrible yeah. because it's emotional stuff. Uh, and basically, Janine sort of says that she, she likes Cohen. But he acted like a dickhead. Yeah. Um, he, he says to her, am I a dick? Yeah. And she basically says yes. Yes, she does. <laughs> yes. She says you're a child. Yeah, you're a oh, child. Also, I uh, I had subtitles on. Oh, okay. Uh, not from, I just... <laughs> just like reading. They just were. <laughs> Do you know how Cohen is spelt? No. I would imagine. C-O-W-A-N. Give us a guess. Huh? C-O-W-A-N. That's not... Is that how you spell it? Oh, I, th- I thought you would have said C-O-H-E-N. It's spelled C O W E N, which I thought was really weird. Cowen. Yeah. Oh no, you're right. It is C O H E N, isn't it? I I just thought it was weird. If you think about the Cohen brothers. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't know. I obviously didn't know that because I didn't see it written down at any point. <laughs> but basically, he hasn't called her for the last six months. Yeah, since well, they had she's their, been, their she's fumble gone to or whatever. She's gone off to uni. Yeah. Since they they had their fumble and he never called. Um. So he asked her on a date. He asked her to go strawberry picking with him. <laughs> no, he says. <laughs> no, that's not. She's not quite right. She. He says, let's go on a date. She says, I like strawberry picking. Oh, did she? Take me strawberry picking. Oh, okay. And he says, I don't like strawberries, but <laughs> I like you, so I will take you strawberry picking. And that is pretty much how it's delivered. Um, <laughs> okay. Meanwhile, uh, oh, so no, it's, it's not meanwhile. It's just after, so they, they part ways. Yep. Cohen says he needs to go for a week. Yes, and he is making his way back to the house. Yep. And he, we, we see... Uh, Janine's dad again yes last seen uh, on the road crossing he's yep. now in one of the rooms in the house yeah and he is just headbutting the window yeah he's inside Cohen's outside yeah there's uh, just there's blood splatter on the window where he's yeah just banging his head into the window for he's no reason like going full on sand man isn't he yeah. he's like bashing his head so Cohen's like oh I probably should go and get some help yeah so he heads around to where all the other party people are party people <laughs> <laughs> and Adam's there chatting up a girl yeah and suddenly she starts bleeding from the mouth. That's what happens when and you talk to girls as well. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that hurts. And she starts convulsing and seizing and there's blood spraying, spraying everywhere. And they all seem to think that Adam's spiked her. Yeah, this this then went left. Completely. Because everyone just everyone else at the party just sort of jumps on him and was like, oh, well, you, you're the weirdos. You must have spiked her drink. Yeah, get can, out of the party. He's got some sort of reputation, hasn't he? <laughs> So they all get kicked out, even Cohen. Yeah, the whole group. Janine kicked Janine. Janine kicks <laughs> them all out. Uh, they start having this massive argument again. And we cut to the next day again. So we're like a week in now. And Cohen's like, he's doing a monologue to camera. He's like, no. again, it's inverted commas, acting. He's like, oh, I just, I can't have been Adam. He's not that kind of guy. He's an idiot, but he wouldn't spike someone's drink. No. Yes. No. It's like he's having an inner monologue to yeah. camera. It's... it's like he's obviously seen the Golem bit in Lord of the Rings. Yeah. He's like, I can do that. There's parts of this film where it's really weird that they would have filmed it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that sort it's, of thing is... It's really tenuous at I, parts. I get that he's filming his week for seven days, but you don't... There's bits of it you're like, nah, you wouldn't have filmed that. Yeah. One one in particular which I'll come to. Um, he basically calls Janine after that. She He tells her what he saw her dad doing. Yeah. And she says, oh, my dad's having some sort of breakdown. Don't yeah, call him. She's not bothered enough about it. That no, she, she doesn't even be. go and check on him. No, she <laughs> says he's locked himself in the office. I can hear him screaming. He's having a nervous breakdown. Yeah. That's it. And she's yeah. like, I'm, but I'm fine with that. Yeah, I'm That's all right it. with that. Don't call me again. Yeah. So, and she hangs up on him. And then him, uh, Cohen and Philippa have a bit of a heart to heart. This was fucking terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it really was. <laughs> she is, Philippa obviously is in love with Cohen. Yeah. And she gives him this pep talk about, you know, you'll find someone, you're not a loser. Yeah. And then she's like, maybe you should just leave. Yeah. You could start again somewhere else. I think she's hoping he will say, oh, no, I want to stay here with you guys. And she go, oh, I love you. The character of Cohen is so fucking oblivious. Yeah. It is. This scene is excruciating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty bad. I mean, I think I said I mentioned earlier, I think there's only one good actor. In it. I think the girl who played Philip is actually quite good. But this this scene is not. No. Not at all good. She She makes out that she wants him to leave, but she doesn't. Yeah. And she's like, you could leave, but don't leave. <laughs> but I don't, don't even know why you can't leave. <laughs> it was bullshit. Um, but while they're having this conversation, suddenly the postman breaks in. Yeah. <laughs> he just breaks into the room. Yeah, I remember he's good at his job. He's got a letter to deliver. Yeah. He's so going to 
He barges through the door, smashes the door smashes down. Smashes your door down. Starts attacking them all and basically just beats them all up. He beats yeah. up Adam, beats up Cohen. There's lots takes of like, down. zombie-ish noises, isn't there? Yeah. Um, Growling and stuff. Adam stabs him in the chest with a kitchen knife. Yeah, has no effect. Has no effect. He just pulls the knife out. Yeah. This postman does. Um, and then he Adam grabs something and sprays him in the face with it. And yeah. We didn't know what it was at this point, but we do find out randomly what it was later on. And suddenly this guy's face melts off. Yeah, it does. And he... So kind I of, had to rewind this bit. I did a couple of times. Just to check that I hadn't imagined yeah. this postman had been stabbed. Yeah. No effect. Been sprayed with some sort of household object. Yeah. His head's melted. His face is melted off. That is what happened, I can confirm. It is 100% what happened. And he starts staggering around the room and he collapses through an Ikea table. Yeah. Which genuinely was an Ikea table, (laughs) which they apparently only had one of. So they had to make sure that worked first time. Yeah, you don't want to mess that. uh, (laughs) Um, No. Expensive shot up. So there's a dead postman on the floor now in a pile of rubble on the kitchen, on the lounge floor. And then Kipper walks in. He's brought some crumpets, <laughs> which he drops on the floor. He's like, oh, the postman's dead. His um, face has melted up. Yeah. And then they have a discussion about what to do with the body. And while they're having this discussion, the policeman from earlier just comes into the house. <laughs> he just walks in. Just this random. was so funny. <laughs> it was really funny. It made me laugh so much, and it wasn't supposed to. They're just like, oh, what should we do with this body? We, and Phil's like, we can't call the police because Adam's on probation. Yeah. That's a new bit of information yeah, for that. us as well. And then the policeman just walks in the back door. <laughs> yeah, as if he just lives there. Yeah. It's like a sitcom thing, you know, yeah. when like the, the neighbour yeah. walks in and everyone's like, woo, that's what <laughs> Like a low, low when the French yeah. policeman used to just come in. And it was just like, oh, of course he's walking in now. Yeah. That's fucking brilliant. So the postman's dead on the floor. He co- they're in the kitchen, so yeah. the policeman can't see that. And he's like, I've heard there's uh, canopies on the premises. Yeah. And um, I'd quite like to buy some. <laughs> that's basically what he says. Um, and he does. He buys some cannabis off Cohen and then just leaves. Yeah. So weird. <laughs> And then they start wrapping up the body and deciding what they're going to do with the body. So they wrap it up in a sheet, fitted sheet. Yep. This is the point where I'm thinking, why are you filming this? Yeah, exactly. All this is doing now is incriminating. I've got exactly the same thing written down. Yes, I agree. You've agreed to record the seven days of your life. You're now disposing of a body and still filming it. Yeah, imagine handing that in to be marked (laughs) by the lecturer. I'm like, and it wasn't even like they'd left the camera on the side at this point. Somebody was actively filming what yeah. they were doing. So uh, most pretty, of the time, when the camera is with Kipper's got the camera. Pretty much from this point on, it becomes Kipper's, Kipper's the yeah the camera cameraman. cameraman. And anyway, it's so weird. They wrap up the body in a fitted sheet and put it in the bin. Yeah, <laughs> literally, they just put it in the bin outside like, the flat. Yeah, there's like a wheelie bin outside, and they're like, which anyone could go through at any time. Yeah, but they're like, nobody ever goes to the bins. We're <laughs> students. We don't go to the bins, and the bin men are coming. So once the bin's been emptied. Nobody will know where it's come from. It's a genius idea. Okay. <laughs> so they do. They put it in this bin and leave him there. Um, but they notice that it's got a hole in the back of its neck, the pl- the postman has. Yeah. Which they don't really do anything about at the minute. But I, they, they Is it just Cohen that spots it? Yeah. Yeah, because the next... Excuse me. The next morning, he well, runs he, into he Adam's... He go and check. He, yeah, he runs into Adam's room to wake him up. So I've been up all night. I've not had any sleep. I, oh, I can't stop thinking about this postman. He's like, why didn't the knife do anything? Yeah. For a start, why has he got a hole in his neck? Why did his face melt more to the point? Why did the deodorant make his face melt off? So what they killed him with was deodorant, yeah. underarm aerosol deodorant. Um, And he's like, I want to go and check the body. I want to make sure that I didn't imagine all this. I want to check out this hole on the back of his neck. So they do. Adam's reluctant, but they do go down there eventually. And he has got a hole in the back of his neck that's quite large. I've I've got in my notes here in capital letters that why is he still recording? <laughs> I've got it in capital letters a little bit further <laughs> off the page. And then they have the really, really random idea of Cohen wants Adam to spray somebody else in the face with deodorant. But he's a total shithead, Cohen is, because he's like, I want you to do it. Yeah, because you did it last time. Yeah. Like, like, just a random thing. He wants to go up to somebody in the street yeah, yeah. and randomly spray them in the face with deodorant just to see if it kills them. It's definitely like a public order offence in <laughs> the, the least. It's it's really silly. Um, and they try it. And they accost this man in the street and spray him in the face with deodorant. And they don't get him properly. No. Though, do so this is a glancing blast. Yes. And the guy legs it. The he guy's does. instantly like, ah, and screams and runs off. And they follow him. And they follow him to what is known all the way through this film as the old factory. Yeah. <laughs> Which we don't know what it's a factory of or why it's old or <laughs> why it's abandoned, but it's there. They decide they need to go in and investigate what's going on at this old factory. Sure. So Adam goes in, but Cohen gets cut away from him by there's like, are we calling them zombies? The, there are so they there they sort of there. look through the hedge, don't yeah. they, into like the the uh, 
car park, I guess, yeah. of this factory. And yeah, they are shambling zombies, zombies walking yeah. around. Um, you know, sort of, I don't know, five, ten, something <laughs> like that. Are we allowed to call them zombies? Doesn't Robert Rodriguez own the word? Does he? Is it Robert Rodriguez? One of the horror directors oh, owns the word zombie. And that's why most zombie films are like, oh, we can't call them zombies. Oh. Or we can't say... That's why Shaun of the Dead says we can't say the Z word. Because somebody... I think it's Robert Rodriguez. Who did Dawn of the Dead? Originally? Yeah. George, George, George Romario. George Romario. That's who I'm thinking of. He owns it. He owns the word. So only his films can use zombie. I'm... I- I'm looking at you quizzically because <laughs> I'm not sure if I believe you. Okay. I've definitely heard that. I don't know okay. how true it is, but I've definitely heard that. Um, that's why things like The Walking Dead don't call them zombies. Okay. And, but check it out if you want. What about iZombie? Well, maybe they were given permission. <laughs> um, about the video game zombies? Maybe they... I don't know. <laughs> I'm not an expert. I'm pretty sure I've heard that before. Okay. No further questions. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honour. Huh? Um, oh, I've knocked my mic. So they get split up, basically. Yes. Ad, um, Adam gets through these zombies. Cohen chases them away. Oh, he gets chased away by them. No, he doesn't chase them away. He's like, go away, zombies. <laughs> so they chase him, but he, and he manages to run all the way home. He does. And he gets there and he falls on the floor. He's exhausted because he's unfit and he's a student. And everybody's crowding around. And they're like, oh, no, what's going on? What's happened? What's happened? He's like, oh, I've got split up from Adam. And then as soon as he says that, Adam walks in. Yeah. <laughs> so he must have been chasing you down the street. So I, I was a bit confused. Does Adam attack them? Yeah. Yeah, I thought he so. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I must, maybe I looked away. Because I was really confused by... What happened next? Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, with good reason. Yes. So Adam starts attacking them all. Yeah. He attacks Cohen. Cohen sprays him in the face with the deodorant. Yeah. And a weird alien bug thing dives out the back of his neck. It does. It scampers around the flat for a bit. And jumps onto the end of this knife. <laughs> yeah. Basically, <laughs> Cohen stabs it in midair with a knife. Adam's face didn't melt off. No. And he didn't die. No. Everybody else in this entire film... When that bug leaves their body, yes. dies. Yeah. Adam didn't. Had no ill effects from it whatsoever. He Correct. was just fine. He was back to normal. Correct. Why? <laughs> didn't make any sense. <laughs> didn't make any sense. Um, because and then, it's convenient, I guess. Yeah. yeah it's, it's a really weird continuity error, I guess. It didn't even need to happen. No. It was just a case to show us this little bug that they'd made. Uh, and Adam says, as he's sort of coming back around, he says, that thing was on my head. Yeah. And it was controlling me. Yeah. He says, it was telling me to kill you. Yeah. And I don't know what the hell's going on now. <laughs> For, I um, wasn't expecting mind control alien parasites. No, nor me. And then Cohen says, from now on, we film everything. <laughs> Even though they had already been filming everything. Yeah. <laughs> Kip is checking news sites at this point. He's looking on his phone or on the internet. And there's, stuff, there's nothing there. Nobody's mentioned in this thing. Yeah. Cohen's like... We need to go and get Janine. Because we need to keep li- her safe. We are literally now just doing Shaun of the Dead. 100%. <laughs> One, the rest of this film is now Shaun of the Dead. We, we, are, we are going... I've written it down at the end. This, we, this is Shaun of the Dead. We, the plan is, we need to go... <laughs> get my girlfriend. Yeah. Kill Philip. Yeah. <laughs> There's even a character called yeah. Philip. And, and then get back to the Winchester. Janine lives in this massive, nice, big mansion. She was absolutely fine. Yep. <laughs> but we're going to get her anyway. Phil wants to run away. She wants, just wants to leave, get out of the town. So what they do now is the same thing that everybody does in every um, zombie film. Tool up. Tool up. Go to a supermarket. Yeah, well, I, this really confused me because it was dark. <laughs> yeah. I didn't realise they were in a supermarket at first. I just thought I they were... I think Kipper worked there. Yeah, I just thought they were in a florist. <laughs> there was flowers everywhere. <laughs> there was flowers everywhere. I, f- I got the impression that Kipper worked there and he was like, we'll go in there, we'll tool up, we'll get some foods. Get lo- They went for deodorant. They wanted like 15 cans of deodorant. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> When they get in there, there's obviously some zombies in there. We get a quick little scene of them fighting off zombies with yeah. deodorant. Get past a couple. I never thought I'd say the word. Fighting have, off zombies with deodorant. I have no idea if they actually got the deodorant. They did. They got 15 cans. Right. Okay. Because you'll... I'll bring that up again later on. Um, so they're, they're getting attacked. As they're running home, they're getting attacked by loads of people and they keep just spraying loads of people in the face. And they end up back at home. Yep. With their stash. They actually say at this point, we need Shaun of the Dead style weapons. Yes. <laughs> So they're not even hiding the fact that they're blatantly ripping off Shaun of the Dead at this point. But I can't stress this enough. This is not a comedy. <laughs> no, not at all. Although I laughed a lot. <laughs> so basically what they're doing is regrouping, tooling up, and then they're going to go to Janine's. And they do. They get to Janine's house. They break in because nobody's answering the door. Um, they get to Janine. They rescue Janine from nothing. She's fine. She's in a bedroom. Um, but she wants to take her dad with him. Oh, Adam's put a GoPro on. Oh, yeah. He's got a GoPro <laughs> on his chest. 
So we're now going multiple cameras. <laughs> she wants her dad. Cohen says, he's not your dad. <laughs> Just like that. Which is another line from Shaun of the Dead. <laughs> they go into the dad's office room where he was the night before. Um, obviously, he's a zombie because we already knew that. Yep. They already knew that. Yep. He attacks them. They spray him in the face. They, they debug him. They deep, but the thing comes out. That gets whacked up the wall. With His the face does melt. Bat. His face does melt. And he does die. Because that's what happened. That's the rules. Unless you're one of the main characters. <laughs> so they rescue Janine. They've gone, got her. Got her. Yeah. Where would you go after that? Winchester. No. <laughs> <laughs> they go straight back to the flat. They do. Back to they the can flat. just go back home. There's a running montage of them running through the town. And then they decide, we need a car. Yeah. Because we need to get out of Dodge. We need yeah. to get out of Hungerford. Hungerford's the name of the town where yes. they live. Janine's like, I've got a car. I've oh. got the car keys. My dad's car. Yeah, it's my dad's car. I've got the keys. Unfortunately, the car's parked on the other side of town. Yeah, at the council offices. But she's got it? the keys. Um, it's at the council offices. That's exactly what she says. <laughs> Middle of the night. <laughs> Kip, Kip uh, Cohen, yeah. and goes to Kip. Yeah. And goes, I've got, I'm going to go in at dawn yeah. to go and get this car. Yeah. And, he, and Kip's like, because he's a nerd. Yeah, big nerd. And it's just, this is the depth of character. He goes, oh, okay. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll plan you a route. <laughs> Make yeah. you get there as safely as possible. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> what is this? What this? this uh, I, I love the weird stuff we have to watch. That's brilliant. For the, we watched a film show. with Robert Redford in last week. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's what I can't get over it's like one week we watch a film with Robert Redford in and the next week we watch a film that was made with a £10 note it's it's ridiculous <laughs> and not a new £10 note either <laughs> cut to the middle of the night it's early morning 3am probably it's the witching hour Philippa's got the camera she records a piece director camera yeah saying that she feels guilty that she's not really done anything yet basically and she's going to go and get the car yeah. She's going off on her own in yeah. the middle of the night always in a zombie a, apocalypse. Always a good plan. To get the car. So they wake up the next morning. Phil's gone. Um, they figure that she's probably gone to get the car because the keys are gone as well. Or they've watched the video message. Yeah, or they might have watched the video message. Adam wants to go after her. Yeah, he's kind of gone a bit loco, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, my sister, she's gone. So they decide that Cohen and Kipper should go after her. But at this point, <laughs> it's just like five minutes of Cohen yeah. consoling people. Yes. Because he consoles Janine about her dad. Yeah. He consoles Phil because she's a bit, she's not happy when they get back from, she can't believe the world's falling apart. Yeah. Uh, at this point, he uh, consoles Adam because his sister's gone. Yeah. And it, but it's the exact same thing. So they're all kneeling down. And he puts like his forehead on yeah. their forehead. <laughs> and that's like, that's his acting. Yeah. And it's just like, and that, they all talk to him. Yeah. And he must have this kind of weird snake charmer thing because they're all, like, oh, okay, yeah, fine. Because Adam's adamant he's going after his sister. Yeah. He speaks to Cohen for two seconds and suddenly he's not going. Yeah. Cohen and Kipper are going and he's going to stay with Janine. And they even say, you look after the woman I love and I'll go and get the girl <laughs> that's your sister that you love. It's fucking it's like, what? <laughs> it's bollocks. It's so funny. <laughs> so Cohen and Kipper go and obviously they get attacked by zombies. A couple attack them in the streets. Yeah. Suddenly, the, a cop shows up. Oh, t- yeah, Terry, Pe- friend. Terry, Terry Police. Is that his name? Yeah, that's what I've called him. Yeah. He shows up with a shotgun. He goes all um, Jessica Stevenson on him. Uh, he gets a shotgun. He starts saving them all. He basically blows all their heads off. This it, is where the budget went. He says, the, shoot him in the neck. It kills, kills the him, bug. And kills them. And zombie. kills the person. And, he, and there's, there's effects of people's heads being blown to pieces. Yeah. And that's where the budget went, I think. Um, and he's like, follow me, we'll go to the council officers. Yeah, this is my, can I just say, this is my favourite part of the whole film. Go on. So they get to the council officers, yep. slash, clearly a garage, Yeah. <laughs> at the end of someone's road. Yeah. There's no officers in sight. No. And and they they like, they crawl around a sort of a corner, past a fence, yeah. past a garden, don't know where there's some zombie-ness going yes, on. Yeah. And, and, and they can see, like, where the, the destination they want to get to. And Terry turns around, he's got his shotgun, he's giving all the, like... You go over there, you know, yeah. hand signals, and he goes, and he goes, shh, keep it down. And then he immediately goes, a car comes around the corner, and he immediately goes, get out of the car! <laughs> Show me your hands! He does, he gets his shotgun out, yeah. he's going crazy, and obviously it's Phil. Who else is going to be driving a car? It's taken her all night to get there. Because yep. It took them like 10 minutes, yeah. but it took her all night. She's got the car anyway, so they get in the car. Yeah, Terry's got to drive. Yep, the woman's driving. Yeah. Was he actually called Terry? 
Yeah. Oh, you, I thought you just made No, it was called Terry. I've, okay. I've assuming his surname is Police. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Um, and he basically t- starts telling his story for a little while. And then this made me laugh as well because he's like, "Oh yeah, we've lost, uh, we've lost, we've lost cops. Even, uh, even the special forces have been in. Yeah. And that none of them have come out back out of the factory. And I'm thinking, well, Cohen has. Yeah. Adam has. <laughs> Adam has. <laughs> he's I even killed my sergeant. Yeah. So I killed my sergeant. I don't know if you noticed this, but they they. They crashed the car at this point. Yeah, I did notice that they crashed the car. They, they crashed. Did you notice that they were no way doing any more than five miles an hour in this car? No, and they were also a long way away from the group of zombies. That yeah, they there's a group into. of zombies in the road. They swerve away from it and the car rolls yeah. 20 times, uh, but they were not going fast. And Kip says about four times, Terry, Terry, police, look out, <laughs> look out. And he still crashes it. You can see the, the countryside like trickling past, yeah. doing five miles an hour. It's so ridiculous. And it's like they've been in an 80 mile an hour car crash. <laughs> so we basically, the car's upside down. Yeah. They, apparently the car was belonging to a member of the cast as well and they paid him 200 quid for it. Okay. And then just turned it upside down. Fine. <laughs> um, I've been reading IMDb's trivia. Phil wakes up in the car or in the wreckage. Yeah, she's sad. Yeah, Karen doesn't wake up. Nope. And she gets dragged away by some zombies. She does. And then later on, a little bit later on, Cohen and Kipper wake up in the car. Yep. Cop's dead. Yeah, Terry Police Terry, is dead. Terry Police is dead from his five mile an hour car crash. And they're also, they're on a dirt track in the absolute middle of nowhere. Yeah. When they took a five minute walk across town to get to the council offices. <laughs> yeah. I love that the geography makes no sense no, it makes whatsoever. No sense. None of this film makes any sense. <laughs> um, they get chased by the zombies, obviously. Um, I, managed to elude some by hiding behind a they tree. They all fall over loads. Yeah, they do. Like, and I know that's a real big trope. Yeah. But again, it's done. So these are fast-moving, runny much. zombies. Yeah. They're not like slow, meandering zombies. Uh, they hide behind a tree, the same tree, and the zombies just go straight past them. Yeah. So they managed to lose them. So guess what they decide to do? They were like... Well, the, before they go back to the flat... <laughs> I was going to say, they decide to go back to the flat. And check if their mates are okay. Yeah. They just have a walk around town. Yeah. <laughs> Cameron walks out into the middle of the high street, and he's like, there's nobody here. <laughs> and he's like, where is everybody? And then it's literally like him and Kipper look at each other and go, oh, oh, we should, we, yeah, let's go back to the flat. <laughs> yeah, again, for the fifth time. When they get back to the flat, Adam and Ginian are not there. Yeah. And they've gone, the flat's been completely destroyed and they find Adam's phone on the floor. Sure. And there's a video. Yep. From Adam and Janine. And it basically tells them that they, had, the flat got attacked and they had to leave. Yeah. And Adam's like, oh, I'm sorry. I can't hold them off any longer. Yeah. Or maybe put the phone down. Yeah. <laughs> Stop recording. Why are you still recording? And concentrate on holding the door shut. So this time Kip is like, oh, we need to go after them. We need to go find them. Yeah. So this time... We've Kip- lost Phil. Phil's gone now. Yeah. This time Kip has given Cohen the pep talk. Yeah. He's like, come on, let's go and find them. Let's pack up our supplies, grab our weapons and go. Yeah. So they pack up their bag and they count... They actually count into the bag 15 cans of deodorant, <laughs> which is exactly how many they took from the shop, even though they've been using them all the way through. But he specifically counts them in. So... <laughs> It was ridiculous. Uh, so they grab their weapons, they leave. Randomly, they leave their camera behind, even though this is the camera that's been filming the whole film all the way through. Yeah. He leaves it on the worktop, and yeah. then you see them walk away. And then in the next scene, they're just still filming themselves. Does Kip not go back and get it? No. Okay. <laughs> Cohen and Kipper. Yeah. I don't know why I just clicked then. <laughs> Cohen and Clipper fight. Clipper? Kipper. Because you're thinking of Flipper. <laughs> that's how dolphins talk, isn't it? They can hear a baby. A like, screaming yes, they baby. Can, yeah. They go and investigate and see what's going on. And they find this baby and a young girl. Yes. And basically, <laughs> Cohen says to Kipper, you need to take them and get them somewhere safe. Well, where is he going to take them? Don't know. There's nowhere safe. No. We've just established there's no people left in this town. Yeah. And the flat's been trashed. And I assume if I was Cohen Kipper, was... I'd be like, what the, what the fuck, fuck are, are you expecting about? me to do with these kids? Yeah. I assume they're thinking that it's just their town that's been... As soon as they go over the border, everything's fine. But still, how is he going to do I, it? I have no idea. <laughs> so they take them out of the car that they were in and Kipper carries them away. Yeah. Why not just drive the car if you're going to do anything? <laughs> so he leaves. Kipper leaves the film, pretty much leaves the film at this point uh, with the kids. And, and, then, Co- and Cohen starts then rambling on about, I'm going to the facility. Yes. Does he mean the factory? Yes. <laughs> Why is he suddenly so calling it the way facility? Through, all the way through, they called it the old factory, specifically mentioned it a hundred times. And then suddenly he's like, I need to infiltrate the facility. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you talking like, about? Because fucking stranger gone, things. Gone fucking Resident <laughs> Evil or something. So he gets there. He gets to this. Jesus. He gets to this place. Randomly, there's a cage full of people. Yep. 
um, who are not zombies. Somebody comes out of the factory or the facility, gets one of the people out of the cage, carries them away, and Kevin follows. But it's so it's a guy, it's a person that's obviously been mind controlled. Yeah. But it's a butcher. Yeah. Like he's full on. He he was in his butcher's uniform, yeah. covered in blood. It's actually Big Man Dean. So oh, is it? Yeah. So <laughs> of of the mind control aliens gone. Oh, he'd be good for this job because we'll he's a butcher. Because he's a butcher, probably. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> um, anyway, so Cohen follows him basically all the way down. Randomly walks into a spider's web. Yep. Then he walks through the spider's web. Yep. And he finds loads of people wrapped up in spider's web. Yeah, they're all sort of cocooned. Quite a lot of them as well. There's, yeah. there's probably 20, 30 people there. And suddenly he gets dragged away by the feet. He does. So this butcher man drag, grabs him, drags him. Yep. And he gets put in a room. Yeah, I think he puts him in a lift and then yeah, yeah, he kind yeah, of the comes around and he's in a room, yeah. And he's in a room, which is, conveniently is the room that Adam and Janine are in. Uh, amazingly, <laughs> coincidentally, that the butcher... Is, uh, There's the, only two the people, people in this room. I thought, this guy, going to put him in this room. Yeah, with, with his, his two people. With his two friends. Yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> convenient. And they're both, Adam and Janine are both wrapped up in spider's webs yep. or whatever. It's like Halloween decoration yeah. spider's webs. And he pulls them off, pulls this web off their faces. And as soon as you pull it off their face, they wake up. Yes. I'm not even going to ask why it's spider's webs. Because no. those creatures are not spiders. No, because one of them, when he's walking through the the room before where there's loads of people. Yeah. There's a really quick shot. And the, one of the bugs is like jizzing spider's <laughs> webs. Jizzing spider's webs. On someone. Yeah. But those bugs were not like spidery, were they? No. I'd say they were more like maybe cockroachy. Yeah, maybe. Oh, I don't anyway, care. he pulls the webbing off them, uh, which wakes Adam up. He does the same thing for Janine, and there seems to be no ill effects. Yeah. Everybody's all right. Uh, Janine tells Cohen that she loves him, which is really random. And suddenly the screen cuts to black. Yep. And you can hear Janine screaming, and then like a body hits the camera. Yeah. And then suddenly there's an alien's face, full yeah. screen. A, a woman gets got, I've put. Yeah. And... We could, this alien's trying to communicate with us, the viewer, I guess. It's right up in the screen, isn't it? Suddenly... Whose camera is this from, then? I don't know. But, Adam's GoPro? I've no idea. Cohen I, was filming the whole thing, but he had left his camera at home. But he was filming as he was chasing that guy down the stairs. Yeah, and you he, he saw it as he was being dragged away. Yeah. But this bit, I didn't understand who, who's point filming. Of view. I think maybe the alien had uh, just managed to... It was a full-on grey stereotype alien face. Yeah, it was, like, it was you know, a bit like, like big, vampiric, wasn't big it? Big bulgy eyes and exactly like a somebody draw an alien. And, and it was right up in the camera. So maybe hit the alien like had found a camera. Hissing and... Yeah. Yeah, maybe. And suddenly we we now get the Shaun of the Dead ending. Uh, the army come in. They've got guns ablazing. Take out all the zombies. Um, Take out... They've got machine guns. Clear out all the zombies. Oh, yeah, but the SWAT guy who turns up... Yeah. And he grabs Cohen. Yeah. What, how? Why does he say Cohen Rosewell? You're coming with me. I don't know. That I, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> does he know who he was? Yeah, because he's not important. No, of course he's, he's not. He's just, just a student. He's just sh- schlub. <laughs> <laughs> um. So they take they go outside after all the zombies are dead. Um. He gets reunited with Kipper, who's there as well, randomly now. Yeah, he must save those girls. The girls weren't there, were they? No, no. <laughs> uh, suddenly, a huge spaceship flies over. Yeah. Um. Massive, great, big thing. Yeah. Sky get, goes dark, doesn't it? We get an out uh, out of the film monologue. So. Yeah, Cohen's like wrapping it up to camera. Yeah, he's like, I've written most of it down, and he's like, they came. We don't know how many. Well, that's convenient. <laughs> it's like Europe's gone dark. How do you know that? Thousands of parasites have claimed thousands of people's lives, and we do not know where they are from. Those of us who remain must fight. This is Cohen Rosewell signing off. And then it's like, and then the camera cuts to dark, and he goes, "Phil, if you're out there, we will find you." And then the film ends. <laughs> I've got so many questions. Me too. My first question is, did you like this film? This is objectively a terrible film, but the acting is terrible. Yeah. The special effects are terrible. Yeah. The story makes no sense. The characters are unlikable. The the um the guy who plays Cohen. I look full credit for you for giving it. You know, putting this together. Yeah. But he's like trying to be this romantic lead. <laughs> At the same time, becoming like, he starts Mr. off badass. as, yeah, the student schlub and then becomes a badass who can outperform yeah. special forces. <laughs> uh, it's, it's fucking, it's laughable. I, I don't understand what that alien was. No. 
that like grey alien when the rest where of it, it is all parasites. From? Yeah, where did it even and come bugs? from? It's a terrible film. Do you know what? <laughs> People are going to hate me. I didn't hate watching I'm this. I'm 100% with you. I really actually quite enjoyed it because it's, it's bullshit, and, but it's, that's what gives it its charm, I guess. <laughs> I don't think it's got charm. No, but everything about it's terrible. But for and some reason, it works. And I don't think there's anything likable about it, really. But I didn't. I, I didn't have a bad time watching this. <laughs> Do you know who is going to hate us? <laughs> Ross Cook is going to hate us because when this film came out last week, he sent us a message in the Discord, which you quite everybody who's listening quite welcome to join. Yeah, how do you find us on Discord? The link is in the show notes. Oh, awesome! So you can check that out. Come and join us and chat. Um, Ross put a message in there when this film came out of the bag, and he's like, "This is one of the worst fucking films I've ever seen. I can't believe you're going to do it." <laughs> And I was like, that, when people tell me that, if people tell me a film shit, it makes me want to watch it more. So I don't know if that affected my judgment of this a little bit, but I really enjoyed this. I, I actually enjoyed it. There is absolutely no reason to enjoy it. There's nothing good about it, but something about it works. I laughed a lot. I did as well. And I don't, what you weren't supposed to. No, not, not once. They weren't going there's, for... There's no gags in this. No, they weren't going for Shaun of the Dead comedy. They no. completely ripped off the storyline, but they weren't going for the comedy. But it is. It is, it is <laughs> I even, quite enjoyed it. it and is, Ross is going to kill us. It is even po faced. Yeah, it is. Time, you know, especially the way he sort of dreamily looks into camera and, and throws his hair back. It's, yeah, he's got long awful. curly hair. It's awful. It really is awful. I came away and I was like, yeah, I didn't have a bad time. No, nor did I. <laughs> and maybe it's because it's so short, so there is always something going on. It didn't. It isn't a bad. It's a bad film, but it's. I enjoyed it, and it's exactly the sort of film I enjoy. Ross is going to kill us, but. <laughs> I think he's wrong on this one. I genuinely do. Well, it depends which way you're looking at it, because it is a terrible film. Yeah, it's fucking awful. <laughs> but I quite enjoyed it. But it's, you can enjoy a bad film. There's, yeah. You, there's no, just because a film's bad doesn't mean you can't enjoy it. It just depends how objective you've been. Yeah. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I just, did I have fun watching this film? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I didn't hate it. I didn't, no point did I want to turn it off. And I was like, I could do more of that when it finished. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm glad that's so weird. I was expecting you to go. That was fucking bullshit. I hated every second of it. That's so weird that we both feel the same. Because <laughs> you must have known that I would have enjoyed that. I I, I thought because I I know I watched it before you did, and I, yeah. I I I didn't think you'd have a problem with it. Yeah. Put it that way. And I haven't. <laughs> I have no problem with it. Should we talk about stream table? Because it's going to be an interesting one. Yeah. Because I don't know. Yeah, I don't know quite how I want to approach it. <laughs> no, not me. So we've currently got four films in the stream table. This is the fifth episode for this season. Uh, Malevolent is currently at the bottom. iBoy is in third. Results is second. The Discovery is the f- best film we've seen so far this season. Thoughts? In many ways. Yeah. In probably most ways. Yeah. This is the worst film we've seen. Objectively, as a film, yeah, it's the worst film we've seen. But that's not what the stream table is <laughs> about. That's not what the stream table's for. I, If I had the choice, I would watch this over Malevolent every time. Me too. So it goes above Malevolent. <laughs> These two films are in the wrong order. So, They're not. Look, look <laughs> listen. I, I, I will you say this right now. You completely outvoted on results. Everybody else who listens to it hated it. I, But I really didn't like iBoy. No. I know you didn't. And everyone else thought it was all right. So, you know, okay, maybe I've got the problem. <laughs> <laughs> so is Hungerford better than iBoy, in your opinion? <laughs> I had a better time Me watching too. it. I genuinely did. Which brings us to results. And you know my thoughts on results. Yeah, well, you know mine. <laughs> So, in your opinion, is Hungerford a better film than Results? No. Right. So, we're going to have an argument over Results <laughs> again. So, are you thinking this should go below Results? I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not against the argument that says it's it. I, it's more. F- a f- it, it's more of a fun watch. Let's decide for now. It isn't better than The Discovery. No, The Discovery is a better film yes. and more enjoyable. They're film. all better films. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> we're just upsetting the apple cart at this point, aren't we? Yeah, it's got to go above result. It's, I, it's more fun. I think you might regret that. <laughs> I, I, I regret the fact that results is in the table at all. It's more fun than result. I had more fun Get over it. <laughs> I had more fun with res- this than I did with results, in my opinion. Fuck it, let's throw it in there. <laughs> this is going second in the stream table. Yeah. Hungerford, number two in the stream table. Should we do the new feature? Yeah. We still don't have a name. Do you have a name? No. I I said I'd do that and I haven't. Yeah, that's fine. Sorry. So basically the new feature that we've come up with for this season is to make one change to the film. Yep. This would, that would make this film better. Okay. You can, you have no limit on budget or anything like that, but it has to be realistic, I guess. And you can only do change one thing about it. Okay. What are you doing? I'm tempted not to change anything. (laughs) 
<laughs> no, but if you give it good special effects, yeah, it'll just look like everything else. My my main gripe with this film, yeah, is that it's found footage. Okay, because with a found footage film, the Blair Witch Project being the most, yeah, iconic, I guess, you have to at the end have a reason for the footage to be found. Yes, this film doesn't have that. Well, so. <laughs> no, but you can assume that they've given it in. Yeah, and somebody's edited it to the camera and made a film out of it. To the authorities as they were rescued. I would not make it a found footage film. I would make it a film filmed. Yeah. But I think that makes it better. Yeah. Because it took me out of the... The fact that it was found footage took me out of the moment a few times. It does. It's like, why are you filming yeah, this Yeah, I now? do agree with that. So, in my opinion, you can make this a film exactly the same way, but it doesn't have to be the characters filming it. Uh, I needed... I I just needed I needed more exposition. Yeah. So I want to know what what the what was that thing at the end? Yeah. What you know I I'd like to have known more about the uh, foe. <laughs> but what? I guess because it's found footage, you don't get that because they no, don't, the characters that, don't know. It's like Cloverfield, isn't it? The characters well, don't know it, so you don't know. And it. And that's exactly what they're influenced by, isn't it? Yeah. They're cl- they're clearly uh, influenced from Cloverfield and Shaun of the Dead. I, I I have no idea what happened in the end. In that, uh, not me. I don't know what that alien basement thing was. in that in that factory. No, I don't know what that thing, alien. I don't know what that alien thing was. I know that it was Drew Casson in a mask. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> but I don't know. No, I think that's good. Good. Um, that's a good call. So we do that. Yeah. Take the fan footageness away from it and make yeah, it's it proper. Pointless, film. isn't it? Pointless. It takes takes you out of the moment. Yeah. Shall we talk about what we're going to do next? Sure. So, for those of you who don't know, this one has a sequel. It sure does. <laughs> so we're going to. Stop recording this episode in a minute after we've picked next week's film. And we're going to do a special episode on our Patreon for our Patreon listeners talking about the sequel because yeah. we've watched that as well. Yeah, I sure did. <laughs> I went back to back. Did you? Same night? Yeah, oh, yeah. I watched them straight after each other. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. And it's still shorter than the Irish. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, if you want to hear that, we're going to go and record that right now and check us out over on our Patreon page, which we'll give you the links to at the end of the episode. And we're going to literally, we'll bring that episode out as soon as we can. Yeah. Uh, the sequel to this movie is called The Darkest Dawn. And it is also on Netflix. Yeah. And it's also only about an hour and 10 minutes long. It's an hour and 15 minutes long, shorter than this one. So yeah, that's what we're going to go and do now. So We'll see if they can find Phil. Exactly. So all we need to do now is pick next week's film. No, we don't. We don't have to. <laughs> because somebody's played a wild card. Sam Mulholland, our newest Patreon, currently our favorite Patreon, has played his wild card. Uh, he messaged us via the Discord, which we also already mentioned yep. earlier this week. And he went through quite a few films, bless him. Because we were like, oh, I've seen that. Yeah. <laughs> we were like, oh, as soon as he picked one I hadn't seen, you'd seen it. It was quite a bit of a hassle. But he eventually found one that we hadn't seen. And it was, I think it is on the long list. Yes, it is. Yeah. What did he pick, Nick? He picked, picked, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> he picked a movie called Calibre. So Calibre will be our next episode. Do you know anything about Calibre? I think it's... Because I think it has been on our list for a long time. It has. I, and I don't know if I've kind of imagined it. I, I think it's something to do with like a load of dudes out in the woods. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that's the kind of uh, vibe. I'm just checking it. I'm just finding it on it. No problem. I think um, it's a British film. It is. Um, it says Calibre, 2018, hour and 41 minutes, 15. It's really highly rated on IMDb. Uh, it says a shocking deed to turn their weekend trip into a nightmare. Now, their only hope is to swallow their paranoia and act normal. Okay. Sounds interesting. Yeah, it's it got does. Jack Loudon in it and Tony Curran, who you will know. He's been in loads of stuff. So, yeah, check that out. We're going to go and watch Calibre. And we're going to come back next week. No, I'm not doing that bit yet. <laughs> we're going to go and watch Calibre. But in the meantime, check us out on Twitter and Instagram at BOTS underscore podcast. Facebook.com slash bottom of the stream. You can find us on our new brand new website which is www.bottomofthestream.com, where you'll find every stream table, every episode we've ever done, every stream table we've ever done. And you can also buy some merch if you want to from now on. Check us out on Discord. The link for that will be in the show notes. And check us out on Patreon, www.patreon.com slash bottom of the stream. Whereas if you give us a couple of quid every month, we'll give you some bonus episodes like the one we're about to go and record now. Uh, we'll give you some extra early access to episodes. If you come in at a certain level, you can have a wild card like Sam's just played and we'll watch the film that you pick. And yeah, basically, come and be our friends. Yeah, do it. Uh, if you can't do any of that, though, can you please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts 
on Podchaser, on Podbean, anywhere that you can review podcasts. If you happen to get attacked by a bug-controlled alien, then write a review of our podcast on their faces with deodorant. Oh, with blood. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Do that. And uh, when... <laughs> and in the meantime, go and check out Calibre. It's Sam Mulholland's wild card, and we'll come back next week to talk to you about it. Cheers. Bye.